Now, it's been called the biggest treatment disaster in NHS history. The contaminated blood scandal in the 1980s led to the infection of up to 30,000 people in this country with HIV and hepatitis. Nearly 3,000 have died as a result, including many from Essex. Well, a public inquiry has been underway since last year, and it's the subject of a new ITV documentary called In Cold Blood. I think when you look at this in terms of the numbers, thousands infected, well over 1,500 dead, when you compare it to all the other national disasters, Hillsborough and the Birmingham bombings, Grenfell, the scandal that happened with factor concentrates eclipses all of them combined, yet it's never had that recognition. Jason Evans is the person you heard in that clip. His father, Jason, died after being infected with both hepatitis C and HIV. Uh, also features is Tony Ferrugia, who lost his dad, and two uncles who lived across East London and Essex. They're both with me now. Um, I'll start with you, Jason. Good afternoon. Welcome to BBC Essex. Good afternoon, Tony. Good to be with you. Thanks very much indeed for coming on the show. Tell us first of all uh, about your story because you were labelled as a biohazard, weren't you? That's right, yeah. Looking at my birth sheet where it says, you know, how much you weigh and basic information, there was a big biohazard mark on there that you can see in the ITV documentary. And yeah, the day I was born, I had a HIV test. Yeah, and we can we can see that in the documentary as well, those... Um, those early moments of your life in fact that must have been quite strange to see that on a sort of major tv channel well it, it's it's quite something and i'm, I'm sure it's the same for, for tony Ferrugia, where your your personal life is is put out there on a on a national platform for all to see and and in other circumstances i'm sure both of us both myself and tony Ferrugia, would prefer not to be doing that but we're eventually forced to do that in order to actually bring attention to the issue and ultimately to get the government and the pharma companies responsible to accept their responsibility for what happened. So for those not familiar with this story, and I'll tell you exactly how you can see this if you haven't seen the documentary yet, but tell us a little bit more about the film, Jason. Sure. So in the 90s, uh, 1970s and 80s, uh, a new treatment uh, for haemophilia, which is a blood clotting disorder, became available called factor concentrates. And unlike uh, the previous treatments for the condition, this uh, treatment was made by mixing or pooling together tens of thousands of blood plasma donations. And it had been long understood that the problem when you do that is you only need one infected uh, donation um, to contaminate the entire batch. And, of course, we know that in the USA, where these products were being imported from, people were also paid for their plasma donations, giving them a motive to lie about their health status, lifestyle, and in turn that would attract IV drug users, prostitutes, high viral uh, sources. So it was a disaster waiting to happen. And ultimately, this documentary uh, shows how the companies and those in power knew the dangers were there, carried on anyway, and then when we saw the fallout of the infections and death in the haemophilia community, they attempted and um, for some time were quite successful in covering it up. And, of course, we're talking here about um, an inquiry. Have you managed to see much of the actual inquiry itself? Sure. So the inquiry uh, resumed its hearings following COVID-19 uh, last week. I was here uh, all last week. I've been here at Fleet Bank House in London all this week where the Infected Blood Inquiry is holding its hearings. And over, over the last two days, we've been hearing evidence from uh, a, a Dr. Mark Winter. He's actually the first clinician to give evidence to the inquiry. And he has, in no uncertain terms, today we've heard from uh, this clinician, he has said um, that basically it's his belief that the infection of haemophiliacs with HIV uh, could have been avoided um, had different action been taken uh, back in back in the 70s. And um, 
it, it's something that we've you know suspected for a long time and i think finally now we're feeling some vindication to hear you know ministers and now clinicians you know confirming those suspicions that this could have been avoided entirely in the case of hiv Jason, stay on the line because I want to bring in now uh, Tony Ferrugia, who I mentioned lost his dad and two uncles who lived across East London and Essex. Tony, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. I mean, from what you're hearing from, from Jason there and, and what you've seen of the film, do you think enough attention has been paid to this? Uh, you mean as far as um, media coverage, maybe? Yeah, as where uh, we are now, because this is the this is the first time, uh, to my knowledge, that I've seen anything like a major documentary about it. I, I do feel that um, we maybe haven't had the attention from um, from TV stations, from Sky News, BBC, Channel Four, Channel Five. Um, yeah, I, I do feel that, that that this has been kept a little bit under the radar. But I mean, given the current situations that are going on in the world. Um, I can sort of understand that, but this is the biggest public inquiry that's ever been undertaken in this country with thousands of core participants, um, you know, on something that happened sort of 35, 40 years ago. It's been ongoing ever since for the victims and their families, the campaigning. Um, it would be good if we could get a bit more recognition and that the public, you know, partly be in their interest, that it is actually in their interest to, to actually know what went on because, you know, they there is the fact this could happen again. And I think and, lessons and, need to be learned and, and, and for it to be out in the public eye um, really needs to happen. And how does hearing what the doctors say make you feel, Tony? Um, well, I mean, I lost my dad 34 years ago uh, in September. Um, <sighs> it's, been, it's been difficult watching, um, but... but from what we've seen and what we've learned, I agree with the clinician that this could have, this could have been, you know, this was avoidable. Uh, you know, these, these deaths within our family were avoidable. It's completely destroyed a whole branch of our family, being that my dad and both his brothers were infected and the impact on the families and the impact still on a family member that's, that's, that's infected. Um, you know, there's four family members in total um, you know, we are really pleased that it's getting underway. Um, but, yeah, I think it's it's hard going for some of it, to having to listen to a clinician say that this could have been avoided and the fact that we've been saying that for the best part of 30 years. Jason, what would justice look like for you? It's very difficult. I mean, I, I first met Tony Ferrugia back in 2016, Um and we've been campaigning together ever since he was campaigning, even before that. And I think the first and foremost important thing is that we want the truth on the record. At the moment, the government's line has been, up until this inquiry came about, this was some unavoidable accident. We're hearing now that it, it, that's just not true. It was avoidable. It shouldn't have happened, and it didn't have to happen. We want the record setting straight that that is the case. We want the government to accept their liability, as well as the pharmaceutical companies that manufactured and sold these products for money. And remember, the companies that made money from this, Revlon Healthcare, who Revlon today, we think of them as a cosmetics company, they say they have nothing to do with this. The victims and families have to sit at home seeing adverts from Revlon, from Bayer, from the companies that manufactured these products. And, and what are we to think? We, ha we, we have to just sit there watching effectively the killers of our families advertising products as in a fun company that gave our family members AIDS and killed them. We want that acknowledged on the record. Now, where liability is, compensation may be due and all these sorts of other things. But first and foremost, this is about the truth and proper answers. Uh, and Tony, with this inquiry, uh, once this draws to a close at some point, does this draw a line under what has happened? I mean, you mentioned earlier on there, you know, the, the enormous hurt and, and, and grief which, which you carry with you and, and probably always will be. But... 
with this inquiry coming to an end, would that help in some way if it was all if it was all settled and and people had admitted some sort of culpability here? I, th- I think maybe for for the families that have already lost their loved ones, um, I think it would put. It, it, it would maybe put it to bed. I really, I really don't know. There's a lot of anger. There's, there's a lot of decades of anger. There's a lot of lies. You know, a lot of the, a lot of the children have had their lives severely. The children of the haemophiliacs that died have had their lives severely affected by this. And, and, I, and I'm not sure that everybody can, can actually move, move forward from this. But, but as Jason says, you know, the truth needs to go on record. Um, and, and some recognition that, that this wasn't our fault. You know, we, we, couldn't, we couldn't even talk about this. Um, we, you know, I didn't go public until 2000, and I think it was around about 2014. And my father died in 1986, and, you know, I think it is a bit of a... It would be a vindication for us that, that what we've been saying all these years isn't some mad conspiracy theory. You know, this actually happened. Um, and I think, f- first and foremost... We need the truth, um, and I think we, 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 we go from there as, as to whether or not we'll be able to, to put this to bed. You know, this had a horrendous effect on my family, you know. <laughs> children were put into care, you know. I, I was one of the children that was put into care, my twin brother. It had a massive effect on our, on our teenage years, um, and I think learning the truth now and, and knowing that that was all avoidable um, has certainly had a massive impact on, on my life now. Tony, thank you very much indeed for being with us this afternoon. And also many thanks to Jason. That's Jason Evans, the person um, whose father died after being infected with both hepatitis C and HIV. And Tony Ferrugia there, who lost his dad <clears throat> and two uncles who lived across East London and Essex. In Cold Blood Exposure is now available on ITV's catch-up service, ITV Hub.